Hey, hey guys, what's going on? B Man Jones here with the HNG video. And in this video, I'm going to be going over some of the pilot controls for you guys to help you out with uh, flying. I understand flying around for the first time can be a bit frustrating. Into the trees, into the ground, the pilots shooting you down while you're just trying to get an understanding of how, you're, how to fly around. Into the trees again. <laughs> So, in this video I'm going to be focusing on the Curtis 052 Owl, since it is the default plane you get when you uh, first purchase a pilot, on the American side at least. Um, so I'm going to also explain how to also purchase and get a pilot. Okay, so, there's actually three ways you can get a fighter pilot. The first way is you can upgrade your infantrymen into a fighter pilot by with 114,000 credits or 450 gold if you have it. The second way is to recruit a soldier, go over to fighter pilot, buy a pilot for 200,000 200, credits. The third way is with gold again if you have it, 2,000 gold. Now buying gold is in euros so you can easily just google search the currency if for whatever wherever you're living for me since I'm Canadian if I was to want to get a pilot with and spend some of that hard-earned cash it'd be ten dollars and 45 cents in euros but for me that would be 1483 if we're getting a bit critical 1483 so roughly fifteen dollars for a fighter pilot the standard ammo that the Curtis owl gets or owl for short hey, come on is the M2 ball. It not gonna lie, it's pretty shitty when you're first hitting those airs. It takes a while to take down other enemy planes who have upgraded their planes to a higher damaging ammo. And when you do upgrade the ribbon and you're able to get the Springfield ammo, it is a significant increase in damage and you'll have a lot easier time taking out enemy planes. The higher explosive ammo is more or less for the heavier t heavier vehicles take them out easier because the Springfields aren't able to penetrate them. The Owl does come with two bombs. Now keep in mind that they don't really do much damage to heavier tanks. So taking out heavier tanks like the Panzer and the Tigers as such will take a lot more than just two bombs. Otherwise than that vehicles and APCs are easy one bomb, two bombs. And yeah, let's go. Okay, let's get into the air now. Okay, when you first get tossed into hell in the sky, you most likely be me and thinking, how do these controls work? Well, if you hit escape and you go to input setting, you should see there that there's two different modes a throttle and a control. I'm going to be going over the controls first and then the uh, throttle second. By default, you should be starting at camera mode and automatic. With this, I think is the easiest way for beginner pilots to get used to the sky and how the plane works. You simply just use your mouse to fly around. Up, down, left, right. Uh, you can use your AD keys to maneuver your barrel rolls and your avian rolls, make your fly flying sharper, all that jazz. If you hold the left shift, you can see that uh, your plane will stay stationary and you'll be able to move your camera around and look around you. It will, you also can also scroll in by just scrolling in and going into first person mode. For the mouse mode now, it's basically the same thing as camera mode, uh, but it's just... I find that it's a bit more smoother. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Now, for classic, it does get a bit tricky, but uh, once you do uh, understand it, it makes you feel like a real badass ace pilot. <laughs> At least I feel. With uh, the classic settings, here's also probably what you've been looking for. There, you'll be able to, in this mode, you'll be able to use your WASD keys to fly and maneuver your plane around. But the only way to do this is by holding your left shift and your left control key. Like I said before, holding your left shift will allow you to stay stationary and look around your plane but with the classic mode you'll be able to use your WASD to fly around and also use your mouse to look around at the same time. For holding control it allows you to fly with WASD still but instead of looking around your plane your mouse lets you turn left and right. 
By the way, if you're, I hope your pinky game is strong because you're in this mode. You'll be holding your left shift and your left control a lot. When adjusting your throttle speed in classic mode, I know I haven't gone to the throttles yet, but once you do uh, get onto classic, if you do to end up doing it. Holding the left shift and control, sadly, you won't be able to adjust your speed. You'll have to uh, let go of those keys and adjust it. Unless you have a gaming mouse, and if you have mouse buttons 4 and 5, you can adjust your throttle with uh, mouse buttons 4 and 5. Personally, I use Classic, so a quick dumbed down version of how I like to think of Classic is shift to fly around, maneuver, and evade. And then you, when you're going to a dogfight or a um, trying to kill another enemy pilot, you hold control. It's pretty simple. Okay, let's get to the throttles now. The throttles are the easiest to understand. With the white bar next to your crosshair, it determines the speed on how fast you're going. And when you're in automatic mode, when adjusting your speed, the line there will slide up and down, and once you're done pressing your speed, it will reposition itself back to that little uh, permanent line that's right there. For step mode, it will go up in notches. So as you press it, it will go up, and as you press, it will go down, up as you as you see fit. So for smooth now, it's the same as automatic, but instead when you release the keys, it won't automatically go back to default speed. For a quick tip, two quick tips actually, for bombing and landing. First off, bombing. I know common sense you should be using the crosshair, and you will think that first think that when you first go into flying, but I have come to learn and been told that Try using the nose of your plane when it comes to bombing. It's a bit more accurate than the uh, crosshair itself, and you'll find that you'll land your bombing hits a lot easier. Also, try not to fly so fast as your bombs travel with you, the speed with you, so they will fling and not land where you thought they would land. And the landing part, the thing I suggest, the only thing I could suggest is to slow the hell down. Slow down as much as you can, your wheels will deploy once your plane does reach a certain speed. Once that happens, you can gently just touch the ground with your plane and it will come to a abrupt stop. Then you can hop out and repair your plane. Well then, I hope this video helped out guys. I'm pretty sure I covered everything, I think, yeah, yeah. If I did leave anything out, or any tips, please do uh, leave a comment below. Please also do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more future HNG videos. The next video I'll be doing will be the pros and cons on the Warhawk. Thanks guys for watching and peace easy, be easy, and we'll catch you guys next time.